So now we know the basic principles that will allow us to do controlled fusion. How close are we to doing it? In order to understand where fusion energy is today, we need to know where it started. And it was over a century ago that scientists first understood how energy was produced in the sun and the stars, and that's fusion energy. The key scientific foundation for nuclear fusion was laid out by Albert Einstein with his famous equation, equals mc squared, which shows that you can convert mass to energy. Physicists could not understand how the sun could have been around for uh, hundreds of millions of years. Where's the energy coming from? It was Sir Arthur Eddington in 1920 realized it was coming from nuclear fusion. Now, this set the stage for the discovery of nuclear energy, both fission and fusion. Now, during the uh, 30s and 40s, attention focused on fission because it was the easier one to accomplish. So from the 1950s, when fusion was first shown in the lab through the 60s, 70s, 80s, countries, scientists, we're building more and more sophisticated fusion experiments, fusion machines. One of the first agreements between the Soviet Union and the United States, agreed by Presidents Reagan and Gorbachev in 1985, was an agreement to move forward together on an international experiment to prove out fusion. And they were getting better and better at getting the temperatures up, getting more energy out, but they never got beyond that moment where you could get more energy out of the experiment than energy in. Scientists knew that if you could crack this code, you would unleash a new age, an era where energy is abundant, energy is cheap, energy is available to all. So there are two major milestones that we hit just in the last several years. One of them was the amount of energy that was being released from the fusion reactions exceeded the amount of laser energy that was used to make the compression happen. This happened at the National Ignition Facility in December of 2022. They shot 192 lasers onto a target. Literally, each laser, the most powerful laser on Earth. Collapsing the target, and in a very, very brief amount of time. More energy went out than energy went onto the target and proved that here we are, fusion can work. For us, this is the Wright Brothers moment. This is the time when the airplane flies. You prove that the airplane flies. It's not yet the time that you're selling the airplane. It's not yet commercial, but we've proved the physics. And the other one, which I'd point out, was a successful test, a new form of very high-performing magnet that was done at MIT. It was primarily a technology advancement that greatly improved the efficiency of how we make these powerful magnetic fields to steer and contain the hot plasma fuel. The reason for the excitement um, that we have in fusion right now is we've accomplished the science of this. These things that sound almost like science fiction, like 100 million degrees, were achieved in the laboratory quite routinely. For decades, Fusion energy was a province of national lab scientists, government research programs, but only in recent years has it moved into the private sector. There is a, a multitude of different companies looking at different ways on how to get there, and investors are backing them because they think they have a way to get to commercialization at speed and then develop faster from there. And these uh, companies are not looking at developing fusion in decades, they're looking at developing fusion this decade, within years. This starts off as a curiosity-based, science-driven quest to unlock like the mysteries of the universe. And all of a sudden, once you unlock those, you realize at some point, it's not just about curiosity anymore. It's about delivering <laughs> on, on that promise. And I believe that we have hit that inflection point in fusion.